The next thing we're going to learn is how to estimate SIRS. Okay, estimating SIRS. You'll remember that I showed you guys that the square root of 2 has got this funny 1, 4, 1, 4, and it goes on to infinity. Okay, but what if you didn't have a calculator with you and you wanted to know more or less how big is the square root of 2? Okay, then that is called a, called a surge. You remember we said that this number is irrational. It's got a decimal place that doesn't repeat itself. Okay, and it goes on to infinity. That number is irrational. Now, um, how would we go about estimating this number? Now, we're just going to look in our estimation very basically between which two integers will we find it. Okay, let's quickly just understand the square root a little bit better. If I have a square root of something, what does that mean? Okay, the square root of 16 means what did I multiply by itself to get 16? It's quite easy. It was 4 times 4. But what I want to show you is just a different way of looking at all of this. And in the square root of 16, we're going to, or oh, let's make it actually a little bit easier. Let's try, yeah, square root of 16 is, is fine. I'm going to look at this collection of eggs. Okay. And if you look at all of these eggs, I've got, it seems, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I actually have exactly 16 eggs. Now, is it possible to pack these eggs in a perfect square? There we go. It's a perfect square. A square, remember, is something with a 90, is a shape, a four-sided shape with a 90 degree angle where all four sides have the same length. Okay, and that's what we see here. We've got a perfect square with 16 eggs in it. Now, if I take this square root, I'm actually asking, okay, if I put 16 objects in a perfect square, how wide will the side be? What will this side length be? And we see it's one, two, three, four. Okay. Similarly, if I take away some of these eggs to make another perfect square, there's a perfect square again. This is a perfect square. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine. Okay, and what is the side length? So this kind of how I can look at it. If I take the square root of nine, I'm asking if I take nine things and pack it in a perfect square. Okay, what would the side length be? Or what times what is nine? There's two ways of looking at it, and I see the square root of nine. If I take put nine objects in a perfect square, then the side length will be three. Okay. Let's go further, make a smaller square. Okay, that's quite a small square. Okay, this one consists of four eggs, and the side length is equal to two. There's two eggs in each length, okay, which means that the square root of four is equal to 2 or 2 times 2 equals 4 okay and the smallest perfect square we can make is 1 and the side length is 1 which means that the square root of 1 is equal to 1 okay now the one thing I want you to understand at this point is that we get special numbers called perfect squares and one is a perfect square because one if I take one item I can make a perfect square of it the next perfect square is four because I need four items to make the next perfect square the next perfect square is 9 because, and how did I get it? Well, if I take 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5. 4 plus 5 is 9. Okay. The next time I'm going to have to add 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. But anyways, the next perfect square is 16. The next one will be 25. Then 36. These numbers are called perfect squares. And I think you can understand. It's because if we have items and we pack them in a square, I can make a complete square. But one way of finding them, an easier way of finding these answers, is by simply multiplying numbers by itself. So, for example, 1 I find by saying 1 times 1. 4 I find by saying 2 times 2. 3 I find by saying 3 times 3. Ah, oh, sorry. 1 I get 1 times 1. 4 I get 2 times 2. 9 I get 3 times 3. 16 I get when I say 4 times 4. 25 is 5 squared or 5 times 5. 36 is 6 squared or 6 times 6. Can you see why we call this a square now? 6 squared or let's use that one. 9 squared. Sorry, 3 squared because I've got a side length 3 that makes a square 3 squared okay now what if I told you that you only get 6 eggs and you must pack them in a perfect square okay what will the side length be well at this point it's not a perfect square one size is 3 one size is, side is 2 so I'll have to make this side smaller and that side longer. But if I do that, I sit with a similar problem. Okay? So actually, I'm going to have to cut away a little part of this egg and put this half over there. And a little part of that egg, obviously, as well, and put its part over here. And then I still have a gap there. So I'm going to have to cut off a little bit here, another little bit there, another little bit there, another little bit there. All I want to show you is the point that this side length up to wherever it's going to be after I cut it is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. Halfway, maybe, it doesn't really matter. All I know is that if I tried to put 6 in a square I will get an answer that is less than 3 as a side length but I'll also get an answer that's bigger than 2 so I know that the square root of 6 is smaller than 3 but bigger than 2 getting it? great